said, if you can't win, wreck someone who can. Exactly. And that was, I, I knew exactly. I wasn't winning that. Why do people not get out of the fast lane? Every right. time I see that picture of you riding around with that big ass fro you're wearing, it, I still get pissed. It was that night I said, preparate, but I didn't say what I wasn't supposed to say, and that's A1. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, another episode of Real Talk 447. I'm Jeff Emig, and Ricky Carmichael, I think, is on one of the sides here of me. Um, round four of uh, Monster Energy Supercross is in the books. Uh, and you had uh, uh, a lot of snow outside, but it was uh, really warm inside. Two pretty good main events and overall a pretty good night of racing. Yeah, it was it was a good night. Um, you know, there's so many moving parts this this year, Monster Energy Supercross. But uh, nevertheless, I want to get to it. A lot of drama in the in the 250 class there, and I want to know first off your take, Jeff, and what you think of Christian Craig's move on Jet Lawrence there on the last lap. Was it too much? Not enough? What would you have done in that situation? Well, what I would have done, especially if it was you. I would have taken your ass all the way out to the side of the stadium. We wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't even attempt it to turn. But um, that, I don't think that that's the case of what happened with Christian Craig and Jet yeah. Lawrence. Now, I watched it a couple times, uh, you know, the slow-mo. My opinion was that uh, obviously they both came together. They're both going for the same line. They're both trying to do the same thing. They're going for it. So I don't really place any blame on either side. It looked like that when Craig landed off of the triple end of the turn, as he kind of needed to turn and kind of get on the brakes, look, it looks like the back tire gets kicked up a little bit. So then he's not able to get on the brakes like with the rear brake. And so the rear wheel comes off. Then I think his weight was a little bit to his right. So I don't, I, I'm, I don't think that it was as intentional as most people think. I'm also going to say that on the flip side, when Jet landed, he just wanted to try to get across. And that I don't, I don't think that he gave Craig enough room either. I don't really place any blame on either guy myself. Yeah, I think looking back, though, I do think that Craig just used up a little bit. He used up a little bit, a little too much room. Now, well, I'll he couldn't go stop, back, though. Look at, he what, couldn't I'll, stop. Let me look at – what? He couldn't stop. I mean, you're supposed watch, to be – When you go to the stadium today, it's Monday. When you go to the stadium, go back and watch a slow-mo if you can. Get the TV truck to run it for you. And just look and see how his, he lands. And then when he lands, the rear tire kind of rebounds up. A little bit, and then he like, I don't think he had braking power. Well, not only that, and I think Jet was anticipating that he would be just a little bit further ahead and was going to be able to lean on him there. So, so there was that. There was that there working also. So I don't know. I'll go look back on it for a second there. He, I definitely thought he used up too much track, but then I was looking at the replay and everything's happening so fast. You know, it's not like you have a lot, a lot of time to sit there and watch the replay in super slow-mo like people at home might be able to do, keep rewinding it and rewinding it. But it looked as though maybe like he, he locked bars with jet, like Christian locked bars with jet and it just kind of pulled him to the outside. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt. I'll look a little bit closer into it on the replay. But uh, nevertheless, I mean, it was exciting. And, dude, you got to give it to Jet Lawrence. So you think about all the time that he made up um, throughout the night with his mistake, coming through traffic the way that he did. Um, it, was, it was a really impressive ride, in my opinion. And um, he's definitely going to be – it's going to be tough for him to win the championship, especially if Colt Nichols keeps on doing what he's doing. Colt looks like a seasoned veteran at this point, which he is for the most part, even considering his uh, his injuries that he's had the last couple of years. However, he just he doesn't look like he's pressured much to me, Jeff. He, he really doesn't like when he's riding. He's not out of control. He's in his comfort zone and he's pulling away. Would you would you say the same? Yeah. And that win right now, another win, how it yeah. sort of snowballs the confidence that you get and the belief that you get. So what's going to be interesting to see with Colt Nichols is going to see if he gets a bad start, how does he, how does he ride with that? You know, jet was really impressive. Um, 
he was pretty loose along the way. He was making some aggressive passes. Um, and I think he put in a fine ride. I mean, he certainly, certainly um, deserves to be in the title talk. So, uh, you know, what, what was really interesting to me uh, is I didn't necessarily, you know, pick Craig for the win per se, but I said, okay, he's going to be like, he's, he's pretty much the guy to beat right now. He's qualified first three out of the four times. He's the veteran. It's his year. And then I also picked Adam Cincerillo. I kind of felt like it was his night and both those guys didn't have the, like the killer instinct. They both got great starts, but they didn't have that. Like that, like I'm going to go out and win this. And you're like, oh man, they they both were a little soft, if you will. You know that 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 term, Ricky. We try to explain that. Yeah. So the, just the eye of the tiger, just that that quick sprint, uh, agility, fast twitch. Yeah, it didn't seem. It just seemed like they were kind of riding in the zone. But real quick, I want to shift gears. Moseman gives payback to Jet Lawrence. Do you feel like it's clean slate now? Should they both move on and and, and quit the games, the back and forth? Do you think it's squashed? I think they should. I mean, you and I have both been that age before and you ride with a little bit of attitude and you're trying to prove your point and all that. And I'm fine with that. You know, I, I look at, uh, you know, I, I look at both incidents differently. Jet, when he came in on Mosman in the main event, keep in mind, this is a main event. So it's different than a heat race. Jet came in and pretty much just smashed into Mosman. Like he came in and just, just crashed into him and took him out. Mosman, in my opinion, and this would not be favorable if you're in the Honda camp, but Mosman took him high. And sometimes, especially in a, especially in like a heat race like that, if you pull up, you got to give the guy a little bit of room and you still try to kind of ride through it. You still kind of try to ride through the turn and like limit the amount of time you're going to lose. Sometimes you have to accept that. I mean, I specifically remember, I don't remember the race, but I remember you and somebody else, maybe Stewart or somebody doing a little cat and mouse game where you pull up, if you were getting passed, you'd pull up to the top of the berm and almost stop because you're like, okay, I want to, I want to make sure that I don't get taken out here. And I don't think that Jet was prepared for that. Next time you might be like, okay, heat race, first lap, I'll let him go. He's got the line on me. It's Mosman. He's got it out for me, you know? but two totally different things. You think we've seen the best of Christian Craig? Um, well, it, it, it'd be, it's interesting to, to see how he responds to being in the conversation of being the champion. And that, that pressure, people don't understand how different it is going to the event when you're the points leader or a title contender. It's so different than if you're, you know, if you're 10th in points and you're just like, there's no pressure. I, I find it really hard to even put into words of what that is like, but I, I know that specifically when, when I, uh, in 1997, when I won the supercross title along the way, I, and especially when it was over, I remember, having a tremendous amount of respect for Jeremy McGrath and, you know, he had just won four in a row before that about how much pressure and how much the, it, it changes the mentality of going to the race. And then obviously as the athlete, your job is to not let that affect you and ride like you're Jet Lawrence and you don't care. And you're just, you know, 18 years old kid, just going for it, but it doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. So have we seen the best of him? No, I think he's got another win left in it. Nice. You know, uh, uh, to, to your conversation about what that pressure is like, I guess a way to par parallel it would be if you racing, racing when you have everything to lose is different than racing when you have everything to gain. Oh, yeah. And it's just like you have this little child in your hand and you're thinking, you, you know, or this egg in your hand, you don't want to drop it and crack it. Right. And that's what it's like. That's how the pendulum turns. And we are getting to that area in the 250 class, I believe where we're getting to that pendulum. If, 
if Cold is able to win tomorrow on Tuesday in Indianapolis, he'll have three wins, three in a row, and he's been on the podium every race. At that point, we're going to be five races into the series, so they only have a few left in the in the East in the East Coast series to round out their championship. So then that pendulum switches to okay, now I have something to protect, and then that's where I feel like for for Colt, he is really going to experience that pressure that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's a great analogy. Imagine running around your house with a spoon. And the golden egg is in it. The golden egg is worth a billion dollars and you got to go run around. Your kids are chasing you, right? Or there's no egg. You, or run around. Or yeah, you're running, running around, not worried about breaking it. Yeah, not worried about breaking it. Yeah. Hey, so uh, before we get going, we really want to talk about our sponsors, Fox Racing. I can yeah, see- I saw that. I saw that. Did you go by Fox? Did you go by Fox headquarters and grab some new gear? No. Well, I got some gear. You know, obviously I wear the Shift MX brand. Got me. Uh, let's see. I picked up that uh, uh, that new um, 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 V3 LE helmet, the Mauler. Uh, yeah. You see the blue with the black, the black, a little bit of yellow, all that. So I picked that up. Got a bunch of new shift kits. Got set up there. So uh, when I decide to ride again, I'm, I've got like I'll, I'll I'll have a new set of gear like for five days in a row. So it's pretty safe. Do they have they send you anything this week? I uh, didn't get any anything new this week, but uh, I'm, I'm sure when I get home next week, I'll get a nice little care package. Everybody at Fox Racing is so awesome. It's a brand to be with. Just, you know, we talk about it over and over. By the way, I really liked Adam Cianciarulo's gear this week. That black just was, I mean, it just, it's so clean looking. So yeah, clean looking. Point, right. Right. Yeah. Uh, the PC guys look pretty sharp this week too. So, um, yeah, I'm. You, you know what I'm a little short on though. I haven't got a lot of uh, since the at uh, Fox headquarters, which is in Irvine, California. That's where our headquarters are. We have a we have a retail store that's built into the front of the store. It's beautiful. So whenever you know, I live 30 minutes from there, so I can just cruise down and walk through the retail store. And when it comes time to check out, right? Yes. See, Right. So it's great. But with the retail store closed, like I haven't ordered anything. This is old. Dude. This is last year. Right. So right. We gotta get on it. We got to get uh, Matt or, or uh, uh, one of the guys on it, get us some little care packages for some for some casual. Oh, so moving on to the 450 class, um, we've had four winners in four races. Yes. Four different winners in four races. Who do you predict is going to get their first win? next who's who who would you say it would be adam cianciarulo is it going to be zach osborne well this wouldn't be his first win or dylan ferrandez first like, of the year yeah who do yeah. you think um well that's interesting because the supercross research department sent me the um stat pack for this week and uh one of the things is that um um I don't think that we've ever gone, where's the words? Uh, we haven't gone five races ever no. without no. having a two-time winner. So there's right. never been five different winners in, in the, the first five rounds. Right. I, I mean, right. you've got to think that Zach Osborne is due. Yeah. That dude was strolling. Did you see how far back he was? I mean, he was literally hung in the gate and everyone was in the first turn. We talk about, I mean, there's so much chatter uh, on these, on these, uh, boards and these forums about these tracks are so basic. No one can pass well, all you keyboard warriors. <laughs> yeah. How you feeling about how, how you feeling about that? Yeah. You know? Jeff came from like way back. Right. So, um, so did, so did Zach. Hey, but did you see when he got stuck in the gate? He knew he was stuck in the gate, but then he still had that like second clutch motion I just want to really bury it in there to make sure that I am definitely last going across the stripe. But yeah. what's crazy is how the starts work. If you don't get out of there in time and everybody was coming back around, they come back across the start straight, right? So you can't, you can't get stuck in the gate and waste much time. You got to get it out of there pretty damn quick. Yeah. Or- Cause they had that quick, they had that quick turnaround, which, I really wasn't a fan of that start. It just was, I don't know, seemed like it narrowed up really bad when they did that 90 degree corner and cut back across the start straight. But anyhow, that, that's, a, I don't make those change. I don't make those calls. 
Are you uh, designing the Monster Energy Cup? Are we have a Monster Energy Cup this year? I believe we are. Yeah, I believe we are. Have you ever seen at like the speedways how they do like demolition derby and like they do the like races, yeah. like the figure eights that have like a trailer? Yeah. School buses and all that stuff. Maybe that's maybe we need to incorporate the figure eight into instead of the Joker lane. You must be bored coming up with these ideas, right? Right. right? I mean, something else. So, if you're crossing, you got to like check up. Oh, hey, dude, that one. Hey, that one double that everyone was jumping off the track on was so gnarly. And it's crazy because it was just a double. But, dude, it was big. <laughs> like in real life, it was big. Well, Daniel did a pre-race report with the ruts there, right? Yeah. I mean, the they ruts were literally came ruts. up to his neck for, with Daniel Blair. He stood in the rut. When they just for the 450 main, I think it was the ruts came up to his neck. They yeah, were, they were, yeah, they were <laughs> that had taken on the short guy. Hey, did you like my comment about the last chance qualifier? And you know, or no, blue, it wasn't, yeah, it was last chance and how, how much anxiety these riders get. And Todd was asking me about it. I'm like, well, you're gonna have to talk to our man Daniel Blair about the last chance qualifier. <laughs> He's been in plenty of them extensive extensive experience in the lcq the, hey the lcqs though i mean obviously there were a couple of riders that were in the lcq that were you know top guys that have top tens and you know all of all that sort of stuff but uh, uh my buddy jordan was over watching the race the other night and i you know i was picking out like so many of the LCQ, all those guys are incredible riders, you know, privateers and everybody. They're all fairly close in, in lap times. Yeah. So the start is like everything. And then it, it's almost every weekend, there's a guy that gets the start and he's in his spot and then he throws it away. He falls down or does something stupid. I feel like that happened this week, but, and the pressure for those guys of being in the top four. Okay. I got the start and I just got to make it, you know, how, how long is the LCQ? Is it six minutes? It's, I thought it's five minutes plus one or it might be four minutes plus one. Actually. I'm well, a, I, pretty quick. Yeah. And, oh, dude, before you know it, like I look up at the time and score and I'm like, Holy crap, it's almost over. But yeah, I mean, dude, you know how it is. It's pressure packed. And sometimes that's some of the best, best racing of the night, just because there's so much on the line. But I tell you what, the, the main events this, this season has been great. And I would hate to be in the predicting business for sure. But I, I tell you, I'm really impressed with Ken Roxon. I feel that he's, here's the thing with Ken Roxon. And we, we talk about this a lot. You get to that sixth, seventh round, and I feel like that's where it's always turned for Kenny. So if he can keep it up and continue to do what he's been doing, I think he is going to be the guy. I, I, I think he's going to be in the best position that he's ever been in to finally get that Monster Energy Supercross championship. I, I just, dude, he's, and here's why. He's, he's consistent at starts. He's always, most of the time, he's within the top five. Um, he's been the only guy that's been on the podium more than twice. He, um, he, he just, he, he's, he, he has the speed. Uh, then you look at Eli Tomac and his starts are inconsistent. Uh, and I, he has the speed, but his starts are inconsistent. And then you, you, you look at Cooper Webb and I just feel like Cooper right now is lacking speed. I just don't feel like he has the raw speed. He did great. Hey, he did great at the, at the last Houston. There's no doubt about it. But I just, you know, he's not up top in qualifying times like he normally is, or at least when, how he was in 2019. So I feel like if Ken can get through the next three rounds going into Daytona, especially after Daytona, I feel like this, this season is finally the one that he's going to lock it up. I, I think he has a good shot at it. That's that's where I, he just seems like he's in a good place, and he has everything covered as far as speed, starts, all that, all that fun stuff. Yeah, that's where I'm at. yeah, and it was good for him to rebound after uh, the situation at round three uh, with Dean Wilson and the lapper and, and all that sort of deal for him to come back. And he showed a lot of poise in round four when he 
jumped off the track on that big double you're talking about, goes around the outside of the berm, and then also has the awareness like, okay, I don't want, I didn't gain an advantage, but I want to make sure that there's no discrepancy that I'm going to get docked. He just let Tomac go by and then to chase him back down and come back and win the race. That was a real statement. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that he is, is mentally in probably the best place that he's been since he's been on a, on a 450. What do you make of Tomac being good, but not great? Like we've seen the guy, I mean, demolish the competition. And this year he doesn't, he doesn't have that advantage this year. Well, I still feel like he, I still feel like his motivation to defend his title is, is huge. Um, I, I feel like it's still there, but I feel like a lot of people have stepped up the pace, Jeff. I really, really do. And that's why, you know, these, these unreal rise and, 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 and come from behind rise that he's shown and done in the past. I feel like those are going to become less and less just because everyone has stepped up the game. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's where I'm at. I mean, good and great. I think he's a great rider. I mean, he's won a lot of races. Uh, he's won the championship, obviously. So now it's just about ice. It's everything's icing on the cake from this point on. It's about the numbers. So uh, I still, I still feel he's, he's one of the greats. Yeah. All right. Hey, if uh, any of you listeners or anybody watching uh, this on uh, YouTube, if you guys are in the market for a new set of handlebars, new set of handlebars, I recommend uh, what we have going at ODI Grips. You can check out ODI Grips uh, at your local dealer, uh, also odigrips.com. Uh, Ricky developed the RC4 bend a couple of years ago. Um, of course, they made it really short uh, so he could, he could reach the bars and all that. Um, but I got to give it to him. I really like the bend. Like I, like you guys have heard me say before, I've actually switched that bend and I use the, uh, the RC4 bend in a podium flight. So that has no crossbar. We have the, um, uh, podium CFT, which does have a crossbar with a polymer bushing on it. And it's got a lot of like dampening built into the handlebars. So if you want to check those out at your dealer, odigrips.com, check, uh, Give them a look. I think there's. I've always I've always used the flight, but I think I might put a pair of CFTs on there for next time. You know, especially riding a 450. Um, back in the days when ODI first developed that bar, Andrew Short was running ODI. Okay, and so when they first developed the CFT, um, he he thought that especially on a four stroke, the vibration with it that it was that it dampened um, uh, the vibration of the bars. Then they went and did a bunch of testing at the manufacturer and we came up with, with a bunch of data. The one with no crossbar has got flex to it. The one with the, um, one with the CFT in it, it, it has flex, but it also has a lot of vibration dampening. And that's what people don't really know. So like if you're a trail rider or something like that, that, that vibration dampening might be something that you, that you, that you'd be interested in, you know, and the other handlebars that, you know, for years and years and years that have a solid crossbar. Uh, some have the oversized bars and, and like double metal and all that sort of stuff. Those bars are really stiff and, and all of the uh, testing that we got back on them, the actual vibration dampening of the CFT was the best out of all of them. So it's pretty cool. Hey, I, th that leads me to another question. While, while you guys are uh, getting you a pair of Ricky Carmichael Bend ODI handlebars, you, I, the, you remember 1996, the outdoors, Steel City, Thanks. practice day, okay? And there's a left-hander. I think you maybe you looped out, maybe? No, not practice day. It was the day of the race. We didn't oh, okay, yeah. Okay. So my, my point to you is, yeah, you, you're, you're a prophet. Do you think if you had the Amig Pro lock-ons that you would have looped out that day? Probably not, huh? Because they have so much grip and the technology behind them. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think the grips were the issue, but it certainly was at the time one of the most embarrassing moments. There's been twice <laughs> out 
one time was at a mud race in San Antonio, Texas, a Loretta's area qualifier, regional qualifier. I had one gate on the outside that was grass. Everybody else in my class is one to five intermediate. They were in about two, three feet of mud. So I've won, like, I got the whole shot, no problem. Dude, the gate drops, I loop out, I end up last in the first turn. And I had the one good spot. But what Ricky's talking about is uh, second practice, 1996 Steel City, final race of the season. McGrath and I are going head to head. Um, we're going down off of where the dirt part was, where you went into the grass section, the pro section, and I'm chasing him. And I come out of the right hander and the front wheel starts to come up and I can't get it down. And I loop the bike out, break the rear fender off. I, you know, I end up on my hands and knees and I look up and there's, you know, thousands of fans at Steel City that day. And it was like, you know, and that, and, and, and that is why they have, that was the creation and the start. And that's where the mind really started working for Jeff, my buddy, Jeff here for the MIG pro lock on grip hmm. at ODI. That's, that's where this, this really originated from. We were sitting around the campfire one night having some adult beverages and he's like, dude, you know, I should develop a grip because I think that's why I looped out that day. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what was funny, though, is I ride back to the Cali rig. I tell J-Bone, I'm like, hey, man, throttle stuck. I don't know what happened, dude. Roy Turner was team manager. He's like, what the heck was that? I'm like, dude, throttle stuck. Right. And then later on, you know, I end up winning both motos that day, winning the title. And J Bone says, still to this day, I talked to him about it like a month ago when I was in Charlotte. He says that after we had won the title, we were in the we were in the rig, and I said, "Hey, uh, the throttle throttle didn't really stick. That was on me." But before, in between the second practice, practice the first yeah, motion, the not only did they have to change the rear fender, put a new rear fender on, and make sure the subframe was straight, he changed out every piece of the throttle. So the housing, the cable, the slide, everything except the, the actual carburetor body, they put everything new on because they're like, oh, what happened? Is there like the cable messed up or something? And so I don't, I don't remember That's like that, but I'll trust that that J Bone's story is accurate. So That's awesome. All right, dude. Well, the day ended up being a good day. We both won that day, right? Or no, that was your first. No, that was my dude. That was that was my professional debut, man. That's that was right. my, my, my rookie race, my pro. That was my debut as a professional, 1996. I was number 768. That was a, that was a good, that was a good time. I, I was, that was the start of it right there. So, you had all a right, good dude. First photo, right? Like I remember uh, being on the start. I, cr I, cra I, I went six, I went 16, six for eighth overall. I've crashed three times the first moto. You, or you think I was excited? I, Full disclosure, I was probably on the starting line, even though I was focused on my day, I was probably chuckling a little, going, what does this kid think he's doing? Turn him, turn him pro. He's a big phenom amateur kid. He's got, look at him out here. Can't even keep it on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did good, though. You, you, you rebounded. You, you, you took what you learned that day and, and got a couple of wins in before it was all over. So I'm proud of you. All right. So okay, good. dude, I'm headed off. Got to go get my covid ban and all that fun stuff oh and yeah 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 you know the protocol which the feld has done a fantastic job and everyone involved uh has has definitely done a, a really good job of being organized and, and for the riders the staff and and the safety uh everyone else has, has, has been great so i'm gonna go do that get ready thanks for everybody for listening uh hope you're enjoying it there's things that you want us would like to hear from us or do different uh we're open ears we're all about it there's certain things that you want want us to talk about dude let us know people we you know we don't have to always talk shop about moto and what happened at, at each race yes we want to spend a little bit of time on it but if uh if there's other things you'd like us to hit on uh let us know don't be bashful but um uh, fro it's always fun to sit here and talk shop with you my man yeah so if you have any complaints it's uh at ricky carmichael on instagram and <laughs> Twitter and everything else <laughs> or words of praise. You can send that directly to Emig 47 uh, on Instagram and you can check out our Instagram at, at real talk official. I think it is on uh, Twitter and Instagram or whatnot. And That's of right. course, um, 
If you're watching this on YouTube, you can uh, comment below, hit the like button if you liked it, subscribe. Uh, tons of other stuff here on the Fox uh, Racing YouTube channel. And uh, thanks everybody for listening in on the podcast sites.